Well, 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 looky here. All right, let's see what's doing in this box. You can see here the model number, KM201. All right, looks like we've got a big old manual here. We'll take a look at that. And then we have the meter. And we have some batteries. And then we have this pouch. And I guess this is the nice velvet pimp style carrying pouch. Right, let's put that over there. Before we get too far into the video, I did want to say that I was contacted by Kai Wheats and they asked if I would do a video review of this product. Of course, I said yes. I like to play with multimeters and I like to do video reviews. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to put some batteries in this bad boy and uh, see it fire up. Man, that thing is in there. And we have a screw here that we need to take out in order to do that. So... So what we have here is a brass insert for the screw, which is fantastic because that will extend the life of this as we uh, take batteries in and out of the multimeter. All right, so this is a relatively small pocket type multimeter. And uh, as a result, we have these probes here. The probes are small. And then the cables that uh, connect to probes are actually pretty small. And they're captive probes, meaning that they don't come in and out. You can't unplug them. I do like plugging and unplugging them, but uh, I can't in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this thing up and we're going to take a look inside and see if there's any opportunities that maybe potentially we could modify this. I don't think we're going to modify it on today's show, but uh, it's something to think about. Anyhow, we're looking at a 2000 count multimeter, which is pretty nice. And it has most of the functions uh, as auto functions. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can get a better view. Okay, so it's a pretty small and basic multimeter. Let's just take a quick look at it. Uh, we have a function and a light button. So if I long press, I'm assuming the light will come on. There we go. And let me turn that off. And then the function button will go through these various settings. Right now you can see we're set for voltage, AC and DC, uh, ohms or resistance, and then the speaker sound is for, is for continuity. It doesn't have capacitance measurement in it. Uh, I'm okay with that. I used to really get worried about multimeters and having that, but um, it tests with DC current, and I really think that that should be done with AC, so you probably want to have a dedicated inductor and capacity meter if that's something that you're going to be doing. Over here, it looks like we have a peak hold and then a flashlight, and that way you can see your way around in the dark. Here, switching between the modes, we got no contact voltage, we have live, we have phase, and then we have back to auto. Okay, we use the DMM Check Plus standard, uh, reference standard when testing multimeters. So I have this thing turned on and I have it set for DC voltage. And so I wanna go ahead and I wanna test that real quick while we are on the auto setting. And it's coming back in and saying 5.02 volts DC. If we take a look at our certification certificate right here for DC voltage reference, five volts. So we're gonna call that close enough because I'm sure there's some tolerance uh, and some precision uh, tolerance in here. Let's see, let's go ahead and switch this over to AC. And what we should see is 4999. And it's detected AC at 499, which is fantastic. This doesn't have a current setting, so we're not going to use that. Let's go ahead and take a look at resistance. Okay, what we're going to take a look at is 100 ohms, and it's measuring 98. We are going to take a look at 1,000, and it's measuring 995. We are going to look at 10K, and it's 996. And now we are going to look at 100 kilo ohms, and we are 996. Let's take a quick look at our certification for this. And you can see the values here that it's supposed to read. And again, I'm going to say that's within tolerance or within spec. Let's see how it does for continuity. There it goes. Because it's an auto detecting meter, it takes a few seconds to do that. Here's just a quick little circuit that I built. And we are going to go ahead and test the shields. We have continuity and let's go ahead and test the inner conductor. And we're good there. 
All right. We're going to take this baby over to an electrical outlet and probe the outlet. Before we do that, I did want to say that we are also going to use this baby. And uh, Kai Wheat sent me this as well. And if you take a look, this is the HT100. It's an AC voltage detector. You turn that on by hitting this button right here. And there we are. And hopefully you can see that. Uh, if I press and hold this button, we get a flashlight. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that off. And then if I press and hold this button, let's see if we can get that to zoom in. I can adjust the range of the voltage that we're testing for. And we're just going to leave it right there. Well, 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 looky here. All right. So this is the part that holds their batteries in. And then we have these battery contacts here. And those contacts connect to those springs. Sometimes in multimeters, you need to just check and make sure that your springs are working okay. And then uh, it looks like our probe lines are routed and tucked in nicely down here. So there's no pressure or any, any damage to them. Now, as I mentioned in before, you could probably figure out a way to put connectors on here. So you could have uh, different probes or removable or attachable probes. One of the things I don't see in here is a replaceable fuse. And that's a little bit of an issue. But that's why I wouldn't use this on high energy circuits. The other thing is, is I don't see much, if any, input protection. Maybe a little bit, but I don't see any PTCs or MOVs. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the meter. And I like it. It's a nice little friendly meter. It's small. It's compact. You can put this in your backpack. You could put this in a desk drawer or something like that. And you could keep it for handy standard measurements, and it would be pretty useful. Um, some of the alternatives to meters like this are this meter. And this is the same as the Freebie Harbor Freight Classic that you can get. And what's nice about the Kai Wheats is it's auto-ranging, auto-selecting, so you don't need to know what all these different symbols are and what they mean, and you don't need to know what range you have to set them on. Uh, the one thing I do like about these meters is I do like the removable probes, which is not an option here, but I think that that's okay. You can pick this up for about 15 bucks, give or take. Sometimes it's on sale, sometimes it's not, sometimes there's a coupon code. I'll have links to where you can pick this up below and any coupon codes if I have them. You can check it out. Um, that's really it. That's all I got to say. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.